We are all related. We're all cousins and uncles and aunts, and we are all the descendants of a small group of humans from Africa that decided to leave their ancestral homes. Roughly 60,000 years ago, every single human being lived somewhere in the tropics of sub-Saharan Africa. And then someone made their first steps into Asia. These were humans that looked like us, had the same physical body and the same intellectual capabilities as we do. They were hunter-gatherers, capable of adapting to any environment on Earth, whether it was a nine-month-long cold winter or a permanently wet, hot, tropical forest. During the last Ice Age, our ancestors moved out of Africa and into the rest of the world. By 15,000 years ago, the Great Migrations were almost over, and small tribes of Homo sapiens colonized the whole of Africa and Eurasia and were about to cross the oceans to take the tiniest of islands and skip the oceans altogether to reach the last great frontier, the Americas. Hi, my name is Sebastian. Today we'll talk about the Great Migrations of Homo sapiens that made us the dominant species on Earth. Welcome to 7 Facts. Prior to us, Homo erectus, Homo habilis and Homo neanderthalis already left Africa. 800,000 years ago, Homo erectus was already present in Europe, joined 600,000 years later by the Neanderthals. But they were missing something, something we can't exactly pinpoint yet, something that we were a lot better at. After all, they all went extinct and we didn't. And part of the reason is the fact that we spread out to almost every kind of environment Earth has to offer. And we managed to survive and adapt really, really well. But this colonization, our migrations, weren't a deliberate attempt to conquer the world. We didn't set out to colonize every continent following a grand plan of conquest and exploration. No, we did it because we had to. We had to hunt, we had to find edible plants, and as we began to migrate from our ancestral homes, we encountered new environments. Some of us adapted, others had to move further out to find more food, more shelter. As we moved north, plants were less diverse and edible, so our diet consisted more and more of meat. But moving south created a vegetarian diet consisting mostly of large amounts of wild plants. Our secrets were, as far as we can tell, adaptability, ingenuity, mobility and opportunism. Sudden big environmental shifts led to technological innovation, not extinction. A lack of food, droughts, extreme colds pushed us to move, not die. 50,000 years ago, we estimate that there were at most 1 million human beings of our kind on the planet. In the tens of thousands of years that followed, that number would increase fivefold. But we didn't live in large groups. We spread out into tiny tribes. Most of the people that lived in those times probably only met a few dozen of other people their entire lives. Caves, rocky shelters, small camps and garbage dumps are the evidence left behind. 120,000 years ago, humans reached the southern tip of Africa. Caves around the Klazis River in South Africa bear the only signs we have left of those people. Well, almost. Because you see, each and every one of us hold a piece of our ancestors within ourselves. Our DNA keeps a record of our past and tells the stories of our faceless predecessors. By comparing structures in our DNA, we can trace the great migrations, see how we colonized Earth and then physically adapted to the environments we permanently moved into. This is a complex job to say the least and truth be told, we are only now beginning to understand how the great human migration occurred, but one thing is clear. Everyone who lives outside of Sub-Saharan Africa, and I mean everyone, comes from a tiny branch of the African family tree. Every European, Asian, American, Australian, all of us descend from a single group that migrated out of Africa some 50,000 years ago. Now, mind you, that doesn't mean that they were the first or only ones that managed to do this, far from it, but their lineage is the only one that successfully spread out to every corner of the planet. 
we are talking about a very small group of up to several hundred individuals that thanks to a warmer, wetter climate in the north, climbed out of Africa, into the Middle East, Europe and Asia, and then further out. All of the dates I mention are of course estimated, sometimes controversial and constantly adjusted. But some 40 to 45,000 years ago, for instance, Homo sapiens made an appearance in Eastern Europe and gathered around the valleys of the Don River in Russia and Ukraine. From there, they went forth into Central and Western Europe. And it was here that they encountered our cousins, the Neanderthals. These people looked very similar to us and they've been living in Europe for at least 200,000 years. What happened next, we're not sure. In some cases, they were certainly pushed out by us, because they appear to have been less capable of adapting, creating technologies or cooperating with others of their kind than we were. In other cases, we intermingled. There are undeniable traces of Neanderthals in the DNA of some modern humans. We also might have hunted each other. There are some controversial theories that say we might have eaten each other, but thanks to Homo sapiens' superior intellect and technology, we were the better hunters. The fact is that we still don't know how exactly Neanderthals went extinct, but we do know that the last of their kind died out somewhere in Gibraltar 42,000 years ago, after which all physical evidence of them vanishes. With the indigenous humans out of Europe, Homo sapiens was now free to reign and spread out. For 30,000 years they conquered the continent, forming ever more complex hunter-gatherer societies. They quickly adapted to the cold, relied mostly on fishing and hunting, and created beautiful but sophisticated flint tools. We even found evidence that the production of these tools was somewhat standardized and they had multiple uses, kinda like a prehistoric Swiss knife. They used bones to create spears and needles, a revolutionary invention that allowed them to create adequate clothing that allowed them to operate and survive in temperatures well below zero. But these humans were also exquisite artists. The Lascaux cave paintings in France are some of the most spectacular works of ancient art ever found. The paintings might have been ritualistic, have some religious purpose, were a way to present their stories and legends, or a combination of these. Truth is, we don't really know. But in short, for the first time in history, we gained the ability to survive the harsh steppes of Europe and Asia, where it doesn't rain a lot, temperatures fluctuate, winters are extremely cold and summers are melting hot. And these hunter-gatherer societies became increasingly complex, their populations grew, and by the time the last ice age came to an end, they were ready to slowly transform into a sedentary, agricultural society. But as hard as it was to move into the Eurasian steppes, that was nothing compared to the Siberian tundras. Around the time humans entered Europe, they also migrated into Central Asia, going north, following the valleys of rivers. Here they found an ever harsher landscape, with winds blasting the seemingly endless landscape of dwarf vegetation and long and even colder winters. Unlike today, this landscape stretched from Central Europe through Siberia all the way up to the northeast corner of Asia. Very small tribes settled around the valley of shallow rivers and survived on fish, antelopes, mammoths and other game. Up until 18,000 years ago, they reached the shores of Lake Baikal and continued to move further north, all in an effort to find more game and more resources. A multitude of factors forced these small populations to move into some of the harshest environments on Earth, but move they did, and they were incredibly good at it. And as humans moved into areas so different from their original homeland, they adapted. Skin color became lighter, to avoid vitamin D depletion. Less melanin means better absorption of UV radiation, which is needed to synthesize vitamin D, which is crucial for calcium absorption. The shape of the eye changed, to help protect it from snow blindness and to insulate the fragile eyes from the freezing temperatures of Central Asia. Genetically speaking, these are all minor changes. After all, we all share 99.9% .9 of our DNA with each other. But these small changes were vital for our success as a species. Towards the end of the last ice age, a large continental shelf was free for humans to roam. We call it Sunda. 
You could go from Vietnam and Malaysia all the way to Indonesia and the Philippines and at most you had to cross small bodies of water. Further south, Australia, Tasmania and New Guinea were all united into a single landmass. We call this Sahul. About 50,000 years ago, humans reached these land masses and thus colonized Australia. But it took another 10,000 years before we reached the outer edges of New Guinea. 30,000 years ago, we reached a peak and this was the maximum extent of human colonization for a long time. It took about 25,000 years for Austronesian people from Taiwan to build advanced seafaring boats and begin the last stages of the great human migration. From 3000 BC all the way to 1200 AD, they colonized Micronesia, Melanesia, Polynesia, starting with the Isles of Southeast Asia and ending with New Zealand. The Austronesian expansion was the last and most far-reaching Neolithic human migration event. But of course, we're still not done. The Austronesian expansion may have been the last migration, but it was preceded by the colonization of America. Who, where and when first reached America has long been debated. Most archaeologists believe the first Americans came from Central Asia, Siberia especially. Genetic and linguistic ties support this theory. As to how or when this migration occurred, we only have some educated guesses. We do know that up until 10,000 years ago, a land bridge between North America and Asia existed, a land we call Beringia. So the first humans were most likely Siberian hunters, following herds of Pleistocene megafauna some 15 to 25,000 years ago. But even more debated is the colonization of the rest of the Americas. Enormous glaciers covered most of Canada, so from Beringia to Central North America, any travel would have been very risky. We think they swiftly traveled along the Alaskan coast all the way down to Central and South America, but there are also theories that suggest at least some Australasians could have used their boats to reach the coast of South America. And recent findings of indigenous Austronesian genetic markers in Amazonia seems to support this hypothesis. However, any archaeological evidence of coastal occupation during the last ice age would now have been covered by the sea level rise, up to 100 meters since those times. This doesn't help of course, especially because archaeological proof of early Americans are few and far between. The oldest settlement we know of is in Monteverde, Chile, a 13,000 year old site. The debates about the Americas is still ongoing and there's still a lot we don't know. But in essence, this is the story of how we conquered the world. To the best of our knowledge, 300,000 years ago, we appeared as a separate distinct species somewhere in the Horn of Africa. A hundred thousand years later, we began to expand into other territories in Africa and then further on. And expand we did. From Europe to Asia to the Americas and all the way to the tiniest of islands of the Pacific, finally ending the journey in New Zealand just 800 years ago. In our travels, we changed, we became more sophisticated, we adapted, we survived and we became the dominant species on planet Earth. Hopefully, our domination will last for just as long, but the debates on that one are still ongoing. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. I do hope to see you next time, bye.